my guest today on Jazz London Radio is Yaz Ahmed. She's a jazz trumpeter and composer, and you can hear the influence of Arabic music on her compositions. You'll be hearing lots of that in the show. Yaz has also got a very substantial tour over many of the summer months, visiting many European cities and featuring in some major festivals such as Mold Jazz Festival and Love Supreme and also WOMAD. More details at the end of the show. I've got Yaz Ahmed here for an interview. She's kindly given up her Saturday afternoon, come round to my studio to record. So welcome to the show, Yaz. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things you've been doing musically and your career, which is taking off fantastically. If I read all the all the PR, it's uh, definitely a good year for you. So I'll just talk a little bit about the bands that you've had. And I saw on your website you had a quintet originally, and now you've got an ensemble which you've recorded with Les Saboteurs, which is a large ensemble. And this recent album was described by The Guardian, I love this, futuristic jazz with Arabic scales. Yeah, yeah. It features musicians such as Shabaka Hutchins on sax, who himself is also making big waves on the jazz scene. So I want to talk a little bit about kind of the band and the, and the music, because uh, it is a... Well, it appears to be a fusion of Arabic music and jazz. And I wonder if that's something that you as an artist find, feel that's defining you Mm -hmm. and your sound. Well, definitely. I mean, it's been a long journey from my very beginnings after graduating from the Guildhall, sort of being very um, influenced by blue note jazz, that kind of thing, American jazz. And, you know, it's taken a while to find my own voice. And it really happened when, yeah, I started to experiment with Arabic music and and then it became a bit more personal to me and I felt like I could express myself um, better. I mean was Arabic music part of you growing up or did you literally discover it after you'd sort of become an accomplished musician? Yeah um, I mean when I grew up in Bahrain until yeah I, I moved to England when I was nine so I mean you just I mean the music was around me anyway but I didn't really think much of it you know it was just there and I think years and years of of growing up in England I did notice that there was something missing and so I did rediscover that kind of music yeah and how important that is to to me and to somebody who has mixed heritage. It'd be great to hear something what track have you chosen to play now? I would like to play Jamil Jamal and that was actually my second experiment of fusing um, Arabic rhythms and scales with jazz sort of characteristics like the improvisation and also the instrumentation. You know, we've got Fender Rhodes, drum kit, but we've also got guitar, electric guitar with sound effects and bass clarinet and Arabic percussion. Great, well, let's have a listen. Jamal from Yaz Ahmed's recent album La Saboteurs. We were just talking about fusing Arabic music and also with jazz and also how your career suddenly really taken off. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because you got festival appearances this year at WOMAD Mm. and also Love Supreme. That's just to name but a few and I know you've got other things going on in, in other countries I mean just talking about those UK festivals WOMAD that's a great place to play isn't yeah, it yeah. especially as you're coming from a sort of well a jazz trumpet but obviously it's the world music thing mm-hmm. and the fusion yeah. so I just wondered how did that happen it's actually 
because I've been working with um, a booking agency, actually. I know it sounds very boring, but they're very good at sort of um, getting gigs for me because I think people take them more seriously than, you know, I did try and I have contacted all these festivals before on my own and they've sort of ignored me or just said plain no. And then when I started working with them, um, they're called Anti Prima Productions. And, you know, people say, oh, yes, of course, we'd love Yas to come and play. We love her album and... You know, it's, it's very interesting. I'm very grateful to Name Records and Prescription PR who supported the album and got it to as many people as possible. And I think that's why it's, it's you know, it's been so successful because they've kind of reached out to blogs like heavy metal blogs and very strange podcasts. I was on one where um, basically, I can't remember what it was called, but I mean, it was a very, a huge mix of different kind of artists they play on their podcast. But also at the same time, they're drinking throughout the podcast and get very drunk at the end and it's really really funny so yeah it's kind of widespread so yeah I mean it's almost like well it is a it's a profession isn't it the idea of PR and I'm coming from a much more purely jazz kind of yeah. background it's just really hard to do the writing of the music the rehearsing of the band the booking of the gigs and then deal with all that PR so I mean you know it's great if you can get someone interested but yeah. I think also to give your band credit you have to have a really good product as well don't yeah. you you. it's not just playing that sort of music so mm. it's, it's having a really high standard and I think that's great because they've mm. recognised that in you. You were also nominated in the Jazz FM Awards um, for Best Instrumentalist. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that, kind of like what happened. Well, it was an absolute shock for me because <laughs> I don't really think very highly of myself. It was, you know, it was a pleasant surprise but um, it went to Evan Parker and I think he deserved it more than any of us to be honest because he's a British jazz legend so I was very happy to not win <laughs> I totally get it but mm. it's like of course it's lovely to win mm -hmm. but also when you see who's been nominated in your mind you're going well they've been doing it a long long time yeah. and it's sometimes quite difficult to put yourself in that position mm -hmm. I don't know whether when we're like much older yeah. we'll be going well actually I can accept that now <laughs> you know but yeah, um, maybe yeah <laughs> but um I was nominated for an education award and, mm. and I didn't win it but actually I know it sounds very like PC but winning is like irrelevant because we don't do music to win do no, we? it's not that kind not. of thing it's but it's nice to be yeah, it's nice mm. to be recognised, isn't it? Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. So we're going to hear another track, but this time it's from your album Finding My Way Home. And one, I, I asked you what would be a good one. Let's listen to Wawa Sawawa. And that really is my the first tune that I'd written that experimented with Arabic scales and rhythms. And it sort of it was also inspired by um, the bass player Yannick Gustala, who is on that album, and the way he plays. And so the kind of the bass line that I composed sort of has come out of the way he plays so that's also inspired it as well and this also features the band that I use um, bass clarinetin and electric piano and it's the beginning of the band that I play with now the first kind of yeah kind of experimentations into this new music that I write Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that was, uh, I was going to say, is it Wawa Sawawa? Yeah. I got it, I got it. And that's from uh, <laughs> Finding My Way Home. Uh-huh. That, was a, that was a great track. I really like that. You started talking about Yannick Guizdala. So mm. um, I was going to say that as well as there's several musicians on this first album, but there are some mm. duets with you and Yannick mm. playing, which include some spontaneous Arabic influence compositions. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'll just explain because obviously not everybody might have heard of, of Yannick Guizdala, but he He's an electric bass player, mm. uh, I'd say jazz, but he probably would see himself as covering many music genres. Yeah. But he's from the UK, I think he's from Mitcham mm-hmm. actually, but that doesn't oh. sound very exotic. Well, he grew up in Morden, I can tell you why. I know, I know yeah, that. I was going to say, but you probably know about him, but he's now based in the States, so yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, how, you know a lot about him, how did you meet? Give me, give me well, some history. Well, um, we went to the Merton Music Foundation together, and he played in the big band and the concert band. Yeah, on the bass? Yeah, on the bass. And then he also started learning trumpet in the brass ensemble. And he was sort of like at the end. And I think I was on second trumpet. And he was looking really nervous. (laughs) I do remember that scared little face of this amazing bass guitarist. But yeah, so we we knew each other, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, Yeah, he moved to America, moved to New York to study. And then just became like a big jazz star. He's got Um, quite a big on online presence as well yes. that's kind of part of his thing isn't it yeah, and he composes yeah. a lot yeah well I mean so what happened was he he was visiting um to do some gigs visiting the UK and I thought why don't I just do a bit of recording with him and and see what happens and he came into um the cowshed studio in North London and we just did some improvising and a, a few composed pieces and yeah and it made the album and, and it was a really lovely day we're going to hear one of those tracks so uh, again I gave you the choice so you've chosen one which, which track are we going to hear we're going to hear Al Maharak which is named after the place in Bahrain where my family are from and where I grew up music this is something that seems to be quite important to you I looked on your website but I I know we we chatted about this before just to kind of some of the history so uh, again I you know my my research said that you were supported by Birmingham Jazz Lines which is Mm. an organization in Birmingham um, to write some music and you wrote Al Han Al Siduri yeah (laughs) and uh, this was performed at the CBSO Centre in 2015 Mm -hmm. and then another commission includes Polymnia from Tomorrow's Warriors. This received funding from Women Make Music. That's a PRS fund. And the music that you wrote was 
inspired by females who were courageous and influential role models. Mm -hmm. And then the music was performed by an all-female group called New Civilization, which is that Tomorrow's Warriors women who've grown up through their bands. So yeah. young women, isn't it? Yeah. And so I was just going to talk a little bit about this. So generally writing, if I talk about that as a separate issue rather than the all-female thing, so is mm. writing something that you do a lot of? Is it something that's very close to your heart? Yeah, I mean, I do do quite a bit of composing, and yeah, I whenever I compose, I feel like I have to do a lot of research to sort of really um, find something meaningful. So for Polymnia, I did a lot of reading and watching of interviews of the women I wanted to write about. And it was really interesting what ideas came out of this research. So for example, the piece about Ruby Bridges, who was the first African-American girl to desegregate an all-white school in the South of America. When she was escorted um, by the police on the way to school, her first day of school, she was kind of met by very angry white families who were sort of shouting abuse at her and be incredibly nasty but watching an interview about it she thought it was um everyone was cheering and uh, it was mardi gras because as a six-year-old you don't understand what these things are and you know she doesn't understand why people would be shouting abuse so she just thought it was a festival or something so the music that i wrote was kind of inspired by the sort of i mean the huge mixture of music anyway that um you have in mardi gras and sort of new orleans kind of thing but also there's a kind of sinisterness behind it as well so lots of kind of clashing chords and, and things like that so i was writing in a different way so actually yeah. the subject matter inf influence yeah. the, the actual music that you're writing yeah yeah <laughs> women and jazz your album you've got Nadia Sharif on piano and Karina Sylvester on percussion mm. do you consciously try and make your ensembles more gender balanced or are they just your friends and it just works out that way yeah it's basically it's it's not designed I mean it's just that's how it is they're people I like playing with you know the people I enjoy being around with and I like the way they play I, I ask them to play with me and it just happens to be that quite a lot of my my lineups are fairly gender balanced because you hang out with women I suppose. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's just I think you're quite lucky that you've managed to find a, a few I mean I've, I've found a few but it's quite difficult isn't it because there's not very many of us no so. no well yeah I have been quite lucky and I mean it's really nice actually having a, a mixed band the vibe is is really positive and it's fun and you know we're all we all talk about the music there's no like sort of I don't know people I don't know everyone's very friendly and I like that I like that mixture just before we hear a track actually that features those two I just mm -hmm. wondered do you feel how I mean how important to to you is it being a role model yourself do you think that's an important thing do you kind of feel quite a way proud of yourself sometimes when you go out and do something you feel so strongly about in a world where you're a rarity at the moment I mean mm. obviously we're hoping that yeah, it's not like yeah. that in the future but do you feel mm. that's do you, I mean do you feel that's important yeah, I mean, I don't think proud is the right word, but I definitely am conscious that um, there aren't many females. Maybe we are just proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Sorry, go on. That's all right. Um, I mean, yes, I am aware that there aren't many professional female jazz trumpet players or, or classical trumpet players as well, especially ones from a Muslim background as well. Wow, that's... So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't shout about it, but I just hope that my presence will 
hopefully inspire not just, you know, girls and women, but, you know, boys and men as well. Anyone, you know, just to show that you can be, you can achieve things if you're a minority or, or whatever. Yeah, you know, I totally yeah. agree. It's really important. Let's hear a track from those two. So what are we going to hear now? So we're going to hear Belayl, which is Arabic for at night. And this features uh, Nadia Sharif and Karina Sylvester, as well as, yes, the regulars in fact. from your album La Saboteurs. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about playing with other people because obviously as well as your own projects you've done uh, gigs with other people but one of the things I was quite interested in was that you played with a host of pop bands and obviously the biggest one well for me the one I recognised was mm. Radiohead. Mm. You know what's it like touring with someone like Radiohead or maybe you did some, just did some a few gigs but also coming from a background where you've been playing quite complex music I don't know if it's as challenging or... Well I like to sort of learn from whatever I'm playing you know and I really enjoy playing different types of music because yeah I, I can learn a lot. Um, playing with Radiohead was really, really fun. They're very serious musicians and they're very interesting musicians. When I went to play on their album, uh, The King of Limbs, um, they're very into, um, they're telling us that they're very into um, Alice Coltrane and they're just playing some sketches of of the sort of things that they were inspired by and, and how they translated that into their own sound world. Yeah, working with them has, has taught me a lot about recording techniques and using electronics and yeah, and using the studio as a compositional tool as well, you know. I think a lot of jazz musicians forget that we've got all this amazing technology and we can change recorded music to however we want it to sound, you know. It's it's yeah, it's quite incredible so yeah they've taught me a lot and um pleasure to work with there's a track on the saboteurs which is one of the actually one of their tunes what was that one then so that's bloom and i play on the um album the king of limbs i play on bloom did um, you have to get them to agree to let you record it yeah i can't remember i think i just <laughs> emailed yeah johnny greenwood and he said yeah, it's fine we now i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. say something on radio which is actually i like your version better because <laughs> well, i didn't uh, check out the original but actually, anyway yeah kind of people said that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I, I think I'm allowed to say that coming yeah. from, the, from the jazz side of things. Yeah, so let's exactly. have a listen to Blue.
track called Bloom. It was actually written by Radiohead, but it was played on Yaz Ahmed's album Les Saboteurs. We're coming kind of towards the end of this interview. I'd just like to sort of talk about a few things that are coming up. So we've worked together on various projects. In fact, by the time the show goes out, we'll have done a gig at Birmingham Jazz, but we've worked together before that. Mm. And last year you joined our team on the Door Door Jazz Summer School. You've agreed to come back for a second <laughs> year. So Crazy. hopefully hopefully we haven't scared <laughs> you off. But I just wondered, like, is teaching something that you're involved in or want to do more of or have done? I don't know. Because mm. you seem so busy. I'm just wondering you'd actually have time to fit it in yeah well sadly I've had to I've had to give away some of my students because I don't have time to commit to them which makes me really sad because if you know whenever I teach I want to do the best job I can and um, help the students so I do enjoy doing um, the workshops the courses and and your course as well it's so much fun last year so I'm yeah I'm looking forward to it and you've again. done a few things at Trinity Laban as well right. so I know that you've come in there so yeah I mean that commitment thing it's, it's difficult really I think actually if you're really committed to um, re- feel really responsible it actually feels irresponsible doesn't it so yeah. oh yes I'll teach your son or your daughter mm-hmm. and then you say actually I'm on tour for six weeks can uh, can we leave it because you can't <laughs> yeah can't, so. exactly yeah just a bit of a chat about the future so I mean I happen to know something that's coming up in the future but I also wanted you to perhaps talk about it and one of the things I was thinking of is that you've got uh, an appearance in America in Chicago and we've been mm-hmm. talking about Chicago because I go there quite a lot what's that what's that about and maybe what other future things are coming up Mm. this will be with my seven piece band and we're playing at the harris theater in chicago is that in october or something october the 12th great well you see this goes out over the world so there might be something listening and they might think oh go and hear that (laughs) okay great yeah, and I think it's at six o'clock. Yeah, it's it's part of their weekly jazz series. So, so. you're going all the way for one gig? <laughs> well, hopefully we're going to pop in some other gigs here and there, hopefully going to Toronto the next day. But yes, you'll have to stay tuned to find out if that's going to happen. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And uh, anything else that's sort of on the pipeline or things that you're mm. thinking about doing? I've been involved in quite an interesting project. I've been collaborating with... Uh, DJs who I've asked to remix some of the music from the saboteurs. It's been very, very interesting and first of all I was a bit kind of um, worried about what they would do with my music. So what I did is I sent them all the stems, all the separate parts of um, of the tracks they wanted to um, recompose I suppose. A lot of remixes, a DJ will just put a beat underneath it and it's a bit kind of boring but um, these DJs they they did something incredibly interesting and they feel and sound like new pieces of music and I'm very excited about it because it's a way of reaching different audiences so people who like those DJs they're going to listen and discover jazz and maybe they'll buy the saboteurs find out actually jazz is really cool and vice versa you know people who like jazz will listen to these guys and think oh wow you know there's this electronic music and these interesting kind of DJs yeah I'm really looking forward to that it's going to be released uh, this summer that sounds yeah. so exciting I think you've got a great way of kind of looking at music because that's really how you you move forward in in the business is always being creative responding to what people like but also I love the idea that you might actually get more people interested in jazz and and improvised music Mm. that's brilliant thank you so much for being my guest on the show Yaz look forward to uh to hearing that album in the summer and hope the America tour goes really well thank you you've been listening to Andrea Vicary on Jazz London Radio and this was Jazz Doodles (laughs) 